This is the Brett Snodgrass Podcast. I am Brett Snodgrass, and you must go to YouTube and subscribe to the Brett Snodgrass channel if you want to get all the videos that come out each and every week with our podcast, and we're getting ready to come out with some teaching videos as well and some really cool videos you're not going to want to miss. So subscribe to the Brett Snodgrass channel and leave a comment. I love uh, responding to comments every single week, uh, just everything that you guys bring and uh, just share your feedback in the comments of what you like from the Brett Snodgrass channel. So thank you guys so much. Today, I have a guest named Gary Smith. And Gary, he is a speaker, an author. He's a coach. He's a consultant. He's a father, a husband, a granddaddy. And uh, he's been in the business entrepreneur world for 45 plus years. Um, he has really just done it all. And uh, right now, he has written a book called The Purpose Driven Achievement. And what is this book about? I've been digging in this book uh, myself as well. It's really helping business leaders and individuals live a happier, more fulfilled life, uh, create massive impact, leave meaningful legacies. And this is what his purpose is. And we talk a lot about purpose on this show. And I love talking about purpose, but it's a word that it goes deep. And when you start talking about to, to a business leader, hey, what do you do? And they can tell you that. How do you do it? They can tell you that. But what's the purpose behind you know, what, what you're doing? And you get that deer in the headlights and they don't know how to explain that. So we're going to unpack that today uh, with Gary Smith. Uh, he's very knowledgeable, a lot of wisdom and a lot of enthusiasm. You guys are going to love it. And we're going to talk about his book, Purpose Driven Achievement. So now let's get to my interview with Gary Smith. And I'm with the guest of today's podcast, Gary Smith from Connecticut. What's going on, Gary? Hey, it's a nice hot day out here in Connecticut, Brett. Uh, good to be with you today. Yes, yes. The humidity is uh, its bad here in the Midwest, too, so I can feel you for that. Um, man, I'm really excited about today's interview uh, just because I enjoy talking to entrepreneurs and business leaders, number one, and you've been that for many years. I was reading your bio, and 40 plus, 45 years you've been in the business world. It's amazing. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey for sure. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's really amazing because uh, I, I was actually online this morning. Uh, I belong to an online forum. And uh, one of the questions that somebody had asked there is, if you were to go back and relaunch your career, what would you do differently? And it's like, my life has taken such a circuitous route for God to get me from where I started <laughs> to where I am that, you know, I don't know. I'm just, all I know is that I'm really pleased with the outcome so far. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Well, I want to give you uh, just a chance to give a quick summary of, of who you are. I know you're a speaker, author, business entrepreneur, um, but give us a little just taste of who Gary Smith is. Well, I guess the first thing I would say is, uh, is you know, I'm a Christian, and that really is what informs my entire life. Uh, next, I'm a husband. I've been married to my wife, uh, Martha, for 45 years now, and I've known her for 55 years. Uh, so she's really, uh, really the love of my life. We have three amazing daughters and four little granddaughters, so we're at the stage of life where we're really enjoying them. Um, from the business side of things, uh, as you mentioned, I've been in business for over 45 years. I started off as an engineer and worked uh, in various engineering capacities for about 10 to 12 years and then moved uh, into the operations side of business and was running companies for other people up until 22 years ago when I stepped out and started my own business. And when I, uh, when I started my own business, I really did it from the perspective of being uh, a business consultant because that's the world that I came from. Uh, but over the years, things have changed and I have, uh, I have moved into um, doing coaching work, both business coaching and personal coaching. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, I've begun speaking and have written uh, several books, uh, not so much uh, looking to be famous for anything, but just uh, to be able to, to reach a larger audience with the message that I think God has given me. Mm, I love that. I love that. So, and I just enjoy talking to people with uh, experience, experience in business, experience in life, experience in marriage. I'm married eight plus years. Um, I have young kids, 
put someone experienced in that. I'm always looking for mentors and coaches on, <laughs> hey, like you, you've done this before. Can you help me? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to survive in some area of my life. And, uh, you know, I, I just love talking about that. And you've written a book. Uh, like I said, you've met, written many books, but your latest book is The Purpose Driven Achievement. Uh, which basically talks about it's a common sense approach to effectively using purpose, energy, planning, and execution to achieve your most ambitious business and personal dreams. And um, we're, we're going to dive into that book. There is so much into this book. It's it's very well written. Guys, I really, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some of the chapters in this book. But um, But let's just start off. Purpose. That's a very interesting word these days. Would you say? I mean, it's 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 kind of like the word happiness or love. It just gets thrown around a lot of different ways, and maybe it loses some meaning here and there. But there's a lot of different interpretations. But let's kind of start off there, like like purpose. Why did you r- write a book about purpose? Well, it's interesting because when I started uh, when I started working on the book, I mean, the first thing you do is you go out and start doing research. And one of the first things that I did was I went out on Amazon. And I did a search for the word purpose. And I was absolutely blown away to realize that there are over 150,000 books out there that have something to do with finding your purpose. And yet, uh, as an engineer, I love statistics. And I I really like to dig into the data of things. And when I went back and I started looking, um, statistically speaking, 80% of the people uh, in, in the world are not happy. They're not fulfilled with where they are in life. And so, you know, I look at, on the one hand, you know, 150,000 books written uh, about purpose, and yet 80% of the people are not happy. Things are are out of balance here. Somebody has missed the mark. And so I really wanted to, you know, to write a book looking at it from the the viewpoint of how do you go about uh, discovering what your purpose is? And then once you get sort of a sense of what your purpose is, what next? How do you how do you move forward from there and actually begin to execute on that purpose? Because so much of the time I find that when I'm talking with people, they, you know, they talk about what they do. They talk about how they do it. Uh, but when I begin asking questions about, well, why? Why have you chosen this particular career? Why is this particular endeavor important to you? Uh, I get a lot of deer in the headlights kinds of looks. And, and I, think it's, I think the reason behind that is a combination of things. You know, one is that we live in such a fast paced world that people don't take the time to slow down and really ask themselves some of what I would call sort of the root questions of, you know, why, why am I here? And what do I really want my life to count for? And at the end of my life, when I look back, what kind of legacy am I going to want to, you know, have have left for people? And I think the other part of it is 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 just realizing that finding purpose is not necessarily an easy easy thing. There are some people who are born with it, and they know from the day they're born pretty much what they're supposed to do. Uh, but for the vast majority of us, that's not true. You know, we have to take that journey. We have to be willing to discover why we're here. And I I often joke with people and say, hey, you know, realize something. God didn't put you on this planet to occupy space and suck up all the oxygen. Mm. There's more to life than that. And it's up to you to figure out what that is. Mm. And and that's exactly right. It's a hard thing. When I start talking about purpose, exactly what you said, Gary, is you get people just kind of a blank stare. Um, And you have that chapter in your book that you have actually a diagram. And if you went to anybody on the street and said, hey, what do you do? Like if you ask me, what do I do? I'm a real estate entrepreneur. That's what I do for a career. Uh, How do I do it? I can tell you how I do it. Right. Um, But if if you start talking about what's the purpose behind it? Why do you do it? it? you kind of get paralyzed. It's like, you know, you start to think about it. Like in some of us, we have a term called paralysis or analysis paralysis. Right. And, um, just, it's just a paralyzing word and people just get, get stuck on that. And it's, I guess such a, it's a deep thing to think about that they just don't even want to go there. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's absolutely true, Brett. Um, and I think the other thing that plays into that is there's a, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, what's your why? And to me, purpose and why are two different things. Purpose is what is it that I'm really supposed to be accomplishing? Uh, like um, one of the one of my favorite movies is the Steve Jobs movie with Ashton Kutcher. And at the very end of the movie, after he's taken over Apple again, and he's basically you know thrown everybody on the board, 
out of the organization. He's sitting in the boardroom uh, with his uh, with his board chairman and the corporate attorney. And the corporate attorney turns to Steve and says, "Steve, what what do we do now?" And Steve gets this little smile in the corner of his mouth, and he says, "We're going to make a dent in the universe." Hmm. And and you know that's the you know that's looking at the bigger picture of you know all right, what is it that I'm really supposed to accomplish, and do I believe? Um, do I believe that I can accomplish that? I think that's another area where people stumble is that it's not that they don't want to do great things. It's that they don't think that they can. Mm. Um, but in addition to purpose, once you start looking at things and, and you begin to say, okay, this is sort of what I think I'm supposed to be doing with my life. This is what I want my life to count for. Then we need to ask the question, why? Why is the fulfillment of that purpose important? And it's almost like purpose is the vehicle that you're going to drive to your destination. But when you start answering why that purpose, that becomes the fuel in the gas tank of the vehicle that's going to take you where you want to be. Because, hey, let's face it, we all have good days, we all have bad days. And there are times in all of our careers where we roll out of bed in the morning and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, why in the world am I doing this? And when we do, we have to have an answer. If you don't have an answer, you're dead in the water. Yeah. You know, you have to be able to say, this is why, this is the, the, the fuel in my tank that's that's gonna take me there. And that's what gives us the, the perseverance to keep mm. pushing forward, even in the bad times. Yes, definitely. Uh, chapter two in your book, you talk about choices. Um, and you talk about, we all have decisions to make every single day. We choose what we wear, what we're gonna eat for breakfast, what we're gonna be doing. So why why did you start off your book kind of with that, you know, that we all have choices and decisions to make each day? Uh, I think the reason that I started off with that is that ultimately, uh, when we look at that whole equation of choices and how choices work, I mean, we make choices every day. Those choices drive us to take action. The actions that we take produce results, and those results have an impact. Uh, and sometimes the, the impact is on us. Sometimes the impact is on others. Uh, but what happens is, is that when we are looking at our lives and we're not producing the results or the impact, not having the impact that we want, our, our tendency is to go back and say, well, I'll just change my choices. So if I'm eating unhealthy and the result is that I'm gaining weight, I'm getting fat, I'm losing energy, uh, and I'm threatening my health, which is going to affect not only me, but my family. My choice is, is that, well, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to get exercise and I'm going to stop eating. You know, but we don't take the time to go back and say, OK, what are the what are the real beliefs behind what's going on here? What are the beliefs that are driving me? And once I can understand the beliefs that are driving me, you know, what we really need to do is not change our choices. We need to change how, what we believe. And as we change what we believe, then we change our choices, we change, our, and that changes our actions and produces different results. And really what it comes down to, Brett, is that in that whole equation that I put in the book, beliefs drive everything. And so there needs to be a, uh, a congruence, if you will, between our beliefs and, and our purpose. Because if there isn't, it's, it's sort of like we've got a war going on inside us. We're butting heads with ourselves because uh, I think the example I use in the book is, let's say that you know, I have a purpose to make a lot of money because I want to be philanthropic. I want to give a lot of money away. But if I have a core belief that says money is the root of all evil, what's the chance that I'm going to take the actions to make that purpose happen? Hmm. I'm very good. Yeah. And so we have to have an alignment there uh, with ourselves. And the challenge with that is, is that of all of the beliefs we have, only about 20% of the beliefs that we have are, are beliefs that have been deliberately installed by us. So as an example, um, you know, 40 some years ago when I became a Christian, I chose to install that belief system in myself as I chose to follow Christ. But 80% of the beliefs that we have are beliefs that, for the most part, we're not even aware of. They get installed in us as we live our lives, as we have experiences. And again, just like finding purpose, how many of us, when we're producing results in our lives that we don't like, how many of us are going back and saying, well, what's really underlying this whole thing? What is it, you know, what belief, what core belief is that it's driving that? How many of us take the time to dig deep enough 
to find out what that is and realize that most of the time the belief that is driving that is nothing more than a lie that got installed in us, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. And when we change that belief, it changes everything. I love it. That That's amazing. Great advice there. And that chapter, guys, and, and I really kind of pinpointed that, was beliefs, the controlling factor. And I want to talk about that a little bit more is because you said that we're not even aware of a, a lot of the things that we do believe. Um, and it's really hard to get ourself there. Would you recommend, like, how do we change some of those deep ingrained beliefs when we're kind of not even aware? Would you, uh, is it someone that can help guide you through it? A coach, a mentor, um, you know, how does someone change some of those beliefs? Because that's, that's kind of where you have to start, right? Yeah, that's really true. And that's why I make the comment that even, I mean, I work as a coach and even coaches need coaches, mm. uh, because there, we need somebody who can, who can look at our lives like someone from Mars would uh, in order to be able to see things. And I've been blessed. I have a, a friend who is a, who is a coach. He's a business coach. Uh, we talk with each other, you know, every, every month or so. And it's interesting because she's very, very good at uncovering those, uh, those hidden beliefs. And we'll be having a conversation about business and she'll say, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, back up and replay that for me. And I'll go back and I'll replay it. And she'll say, where did that limiting belief come from? Hmm. And I don't even realize in the speech that I'm giving that, that I've got a limiting belief there. And she said, well, yeah, but you said this, this is a limiting belief. What is driving that behavior? And we all need people in our lives, whether it's a professional coach or whether it's just someone, you know, in your family, your husband, your wife, you know, who knows you intimately enough to be, you know, and, and whom you've given permission uh, to be able to speak into your life and say, hey, wait a minute, time out. I don't understand this. Let's let's dig in and figure out what's going on. Um, a lot of times people work better in that realm with a coach uh, because it's sometimes hard to be really transparent in some of the more difficult issues with, with those that you love and those who are really close to you. It's hard to open up, especially for men. Uh, yeah. It's hard to open up and talk about those things. But I think that a coach can really help you unpack that, you know, because they're uh, they're sort of sitting back, like I said, from that per like that person from Mars and, and they're looking at your life in a completely um, different way. Uh, and they see and they themselves see life differently than you do. So they can challenge you in some of those areas. Yeah, I was talking to my wife the other day and I'm a big I love coaches. I, I think I mentioned or mentors, <clears throat> coaching and mentoring. And I'm always looking for coaches if I want to improve certain areas in my life. Doesn't have to be business. I've had business coaches for years, but now I have a personal coach, and we're talking about family or marriage or health or whatever you know I want to to grow in. And it's just all you know to balance it all out. And uh, but my wife, um, she hasn't really been around a lot of coaches and she was talking about a coach versus a counselor and and I've been kind of like encouraging her to possibly to get a coach because she's working on some things and what would you advise like that person out there has never had a coach before like and they're like I just don't understand what would you advise them to do um I think when it comes to uh to coaching I think there are a couple of things that are important um, one is that I think there's a misconception about coaches in that so many people look at coaches, you know, uh, they look at me as being the answer man. I come to you and say, Gary, this is my problem. Uh, and you're going to say, you know, Brett, this is your solution. That's not how a good coach works. Mm -hmm. A good coach is not, is not an answer man. He's a guide. Um, and so uh, a coach is there to help guide you through a process. And you know, listen to you to ask you questions about things that are designed to probe into where you're going, and and most of the time you're the one who's going to come to the conclusions uh, about what's going on, mm -hmm. and that's what we really want. Because if if you were to come to me and say, Gary, I have this problem, and I say, Brett, this is what you need to do, especially if we've only been together for ten minutes, <laughs> you're going to look at me like I've got three heads and say, Well, how can you how can you possibly be coming to that conclusion? Mm -hmm. Um, but if we sit for a while and we talk through it and you come to a point where you say, you know, Gary, I think this is the, the root of what we're dealing with. You've got some skin in the game because you've come to that conclusion. And it's much more likely than as we develop an action plan going forward that you're going to, to take action on it. 
Um, the other thing I think it's important is to make sure that you, uh, when you're considering a coach, that you, you find a coach who's willing to spend some time with you for free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, offer, uh, I offer a free exploratory session that goes between 30 and 60 minutes. And really, my desire in doing that is to answer two questions. One is, do the skills that I have apply to your situation? Can I really, do I think I can really help you? Uh, and if not, then I want to refer you to somebody who can. Uh, and I will have people who will come to me and say, well, can you help me in this situation? And it's like, well, yeah, I can, but it's really not in my wheelhouse. You know, I can certainly figure it out because I've been in business for a long time. You know, I understand human behavior, but rather than putting you through the agony of doing that, let me refer you to a friend of mine who is a specialist in this area. He can help you and you're, you're going to be able to get results quicker. You're gonna wind up spending a whole lot less money uh, and it really it's better to do that. And the second question I'm trying to answer is, do we resonate uh, you know, in our personalities? Uh, are you the type of person where we're going to be able to come together because, hey, let's face it, when you're working with a coach, depending on what that coach is working with you on, um, you have to open up and you have to be honest, you have to be transparent, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. And you're not going to be vulnerable with me if you don't trust me. Mm. And so, you know, can we build that trusting uh, relationship with each other so that you're willing to really tell me what's going on and realize that from my perspective, it's, it's not, I'm not making any judgments here. I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of it is what it is. Now, what do we do about it? Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, de definitely, guys. If uh, I, I would just say, just try it out. You never know. Um, you know, if, if you never try it out, then I just say, yeah. And it's like you said, Gary. Uh, my coach, he doesn't uh, fix my problems or you know tell me what to do, but it's just kind of working through that process and just bouncing these ideas and you know meeting together. It's awesome. Uh, there's a book in your book. You also talk about this law, and it's called the law of intentionality. Um, so talk to us about that. Like, what does that mean? And, you know, we're getting back to purpose. So what is someone who is, you know, obeying or living through that law of intentionality? The law of intentionality is, is really pretty basic. It's, it starts off and really the, the first thing it communicates is that each one of us is responsible for ourselves and for our own personal and professional development. It's not your husband, it's not your wife, it's not your professor or teacher in school, it's not your boss, it's you. And the second part of it is, is that you have to be intentional about your development. So in other words, you have to understand the gaps that exist between where you are and where you're going before you can begin filling those gaps. And a lot of times I find people are, are out there and they're doing a whole bunch of stuff but they're doing the stuff that they're already comfortable with. They're not digging into the more difficult issues mm -hmm. because they either are afraid of them uh, or they're not aware of them. And, uh, and in, that, in that whole model, um, you, know, you have what your purpose is and you have the, the law of intentionality, but there's another law and that's the law of awareness. And the law of awareness says you have to know yourself before you can grow yourself. So what we're really doing is we're saying, okay, I have a purpose that I want to achieve. Here, here is where I am today, and here's where I want to be tomorrow. What are the gaps in there that need to be filled? And some of those gaps are skills gaps. They're things that we need to, to learn. But more often than not, they're personal gaps of who we must become in order to get to where we want to be. And once we understand the skills gaps and the personal gaps, then we need to be intentional about taking responsibility for those things and putting a plan in place to work on closing those gaps. Because until we close those gaps, we're not moving forward toward the attainment of our purpose. Mm. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, so we're just kind of moving on. So just kind of get back to purpose. like. If someone's working with you and you're you're going through these different things, is is there like have you seen just an aha moment? Like all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, I I, I found my purpose, and and then you start working through that. Is there some something they come away from you? They have this uh, this document, this personal mission statement. Um, what does it look like when someone finds their purpose? Uh, I'll give you a quick example about. Uh 
seven or eight years ago, I was working with a young woman who was actually referred to me by, by one of my other clients. And she had come out of a career in corporate America and had started a basically a home health care business. And she sort of stacked the deck against herself when she herself when she started because she gave herself a year to get the business on its feet. And that was pretty much the financial situation that she was in, that if she didn't get the business profitable within a year, she was going to have to go back to, uh, to working a regular job. And when I uh, met her, she was about eight months into that year and she was really struggling because her business wasn't, wasn't growing. And so as I sat and talked with her about it, you know, um, you know, she had come out of a you know, corporate career primarily in the, in the human resources and financial arena. And I, I asked her, I said, Diana, I said, I'm, I'm having a real problem bridging from where you were in corporate America to having a, a home healthcare business. What is it that what's driving this whole thing? You know, what is it that, you know, why are you, why do you really want to do this? And she hadn't really thought about it a lot, but she, as she thought about it, she said, well, you know, she said, I think the thing that's really driving me, and she began to get excited about it as she talked about it, was she said, when my parents were elderly, uh, we had tried to have in-home health care for them, my sisters and I, and she said, didn't work out very well. You know, the, the people were not high quality. They weren't paying attention to the details. My parents weren't getting the level of care that they needed. And so she said, as a result of that, we were constantly switching people, switching firms, trying to, to find the sweet spot of what would work. And she said, the thing that's really driving me in this business is to, you know, is to be able to provide that level of care so that the people I'm putting in, in people's homes, in the homes of the elderly, are going to treat them just like their kids were, if their kids were there to take care of them. And, and, and the whole thing just energized her. She started getting really, really excited about it. And I said, that's one of the key missing ingredients is that, you know, you, you have to have passion for what you do, especially when you're starting a business from the ground up. If you don't have passion and you don't have that why that's driving you to do this, it makes it much more difficult to be successful. Uh, and then sort of the second phase of it was sort of shifting into the business aspect. And I said, so talk to me about your target market. Who are you really talking to? And she said, well, I'm talking to the seniors. And I said, you got the wrong target market here. Mm. And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, you don't need to be talking to the people you're going to be caring for. You need to be talking to their kids because in the vast majority of circumstances, their kids are the ones who are holding the purse strings. Mm. They're the ones who are making the financial decisions. And once we got her clear on why she was doing what she was doing, and began to refocus her on the right target market. Her business took off and uh, she ran a successful business for about seven or eight years and just last year sold it uh, and, uh, and went on to do some, do some other things. But that's the impact that you can have when you, when you walk people through that purpose and get them to write it down and put it on their mirror or put it on their refrigerator and read it every day until it becomes so ingrained in them that they can't imagine living life any other way. Yeah, I love that. And I like how you can write it down and put it in front of you. Because like you said, I think earlier in the show, you said sometimes we wake up good days, bad days. And in, in anything in life, we're going to have challenging days, especially as a business owner, we have challenging days. As a husband, I have challenging days. As a father, I have challenging days. And just to have something there to like remind me, like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm feeling bad today, but this is why I'm doing this, right? Um, I think it's just so important. How, how important is it to do you tell people to, to visually put something, to see it all the time? I, I really, I'm a firm believer in vision boards. You know, uh, I have one uh, and I, I tell my, you know, my clients and I walk them through that process as well of developing that because I think that, I think that we, we need to use everything at our disposal to constantly remind ourselves of what's going on in our lives and what we have chosen as our top priorities. And the more we can, you know, whether it's something written that we can read or it's a picture that we can see, or, you know, sometimes I've even gone to the point of, you know, recording an audio file and playing it to myself in the car as I'm going different places, just to have those constant sensory reminders 
so like you said, when I have that bad day, I just sort of blow through the day. It's not a mountain that I have to climb. It's just another molehill that I have to step over. Uh, and, and the more we can do that, the more energized we become, the more self-confident we, we are in our abilities to be able to do things. And the more drive we have that says, you know, you just keep going, you keep going, you keep going, you never give up, you never quit. Mm. No, I love it. Awesome. That sounds good. I uh, want to kind of shift gears here. And there was a chapter that really kind of hit me. And it was a chapter just about thinking, the power of thinking. Uh, you have something that you do, daily focused thinking that, that you do in the mornings. And I want to talk about that um, because I know that I don't do that enough. I hear about it a lot, just spend some time reflecting and thinking. But as a leader, you know, if I'm just thinking, sometimes I feel like I need to do, right? And so we always go to the doing part and we don't, we spend less time thinking, but how important has it been in your own life that just that power, that daily thinking time? You know, for me, it's a, it has become just sort of an ingrained thing. I, I learned this probably 25, 30 years ago from a gentleman named Earl Nightingale. Um, you know, he was a famous broadcaster back in the fifties and sixties. And he told a very interesting story about that. Uh, he was in California, one of the most beautiful parts of our country. And he said, I'm in a restaurant uh, in the morning having my breakfast. And he said, a young couple came in and they sat down at a table near me and he said, they were close enough that I could, that I could hear what they were saying. And he said, uh, the boy was saying to the girl, you know, well, we came here because we really want to live in this part of the country. And yet, you know, we've been here for a couple of months now and I can't find anyone to give me a job. And he said, I thought to myself, I mean, here are these two obviously bright, you know, energetic young people. And, and yet they're about ready to pack it up and go back home because they can't find anybody that will give them work. And he said, what if they invested, you know, if they went to the you know, local staples and invested in a notepad and a pencil and sat down and started asking themselves questions about what value could we add to this community that would allow us to make a living and be able to afford to live here? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, if they did that, and they opened up their minds, they could come up with ways to be able to do things. You know, maybe they could clean houses. Maybe they could walk dogs. Maybe this guy could, you know, uh, could do something like washing and detailing people's cars in their driveways. There's so many different things that they could do. But he said, the whole concept of it is that people don't know how to think today. Mm -hmm. And they don't take the time to think. And they don't realize that, you know, that the, 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 the matter that you have between your two ears is immensely powerful if you will just learn to use it. Uh, and that's where I got the concept of, you know, of deliberately taking time every day, you know, uh, for an hour to just think. Mm. And, and, you know, what I do is I take a blank piece of paper uh, in my journal and across the top of it, I write one major problem I'm trying to solve. And I spend an hour trying to come up with as many ideas as I can for how I can solve that. And the challenge is, is that for most people, number one, it's uncomfortable because your mind is not used to being dragged up and put to work. We live our lives so much on autopilot that we don't do much of anything <laughs> deliberately anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing is, is that, you know, the, most of the ideas you come up with initially aren't going to be any good. And so people get discouraged. But if you will just do that and discipline yourself, what, what happens after a while is that you begin throwing things over the wall from your conscious finite mind into your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is not bounded by time and space like your finite mind is. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is as you go through your day, all of a sudden, really good ideas about how to solve your problems will start bubbling up into your mind. And when they do, write them down and take action on them. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be enormously successful uh, in my career when it comes to uh, being able to just find better ways to, you know, to be able to do things. And, and in all honesty, too, Brett, this is a time for me not to just think, uh, you know, but to pray and say, Lord, I'm really struggling with some stuff here, whether it's in my business or it's in my marriage or in my relationship with my kids. I'm really struggling with something here and, and I need you. You know, you know, you're the one who has the answers to everything, you know, so would, would you please give me some wisdom? Would you please give me some insight here? I really need some help. 
<laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And I love how you do it every single day. Um, cause a lot of times what I'll see is someone will take a retreat for two, three days and spend this, this big intense thinking out in nature, whatever it is. And sometimes that just can be overwhelming. But I think, you know, for me, it's just that small things each and every day, put it in your routine. Um, cause sometimes these thoughts come into your mind and, you know, I know for me, if I'm exercising or running or taking a walk and these thoughts will just start coming to my mind, I'll start asking myself in my mind these questions. And a lot of times we forget to write them down. So like if you look at my phone or my or my notepad or whatever, I have all these just different random ideas that just thoughts that come into my, my, my mind. So I would just encourage you guys out there when these when you're thinking and these thoughts have something, put, put a notepad down, maybe your notepad on your phone, whatever it is. And uh, I think it's so important. Then you can go back and organize it later. My One of my things I used to do in business is like, hey, let's make a mess and then let's clean it up later, right? So like I have all this messy notes and then I'm like, okay, how can I organize this into something useful? <laughs> oh, that's absolutely true. And, and, you know, the thing of it is, is that most of us learn that the hard way. I mean, how many times have you been in a situation where you you've been sleeping at night and you had a dream about something that was a really great idea and you woke up and you went back to sleep. You didn't write it down mm -hmm. or you didn't record it or whatever. And you went back to sleep and you woke up in the morning and you had this really, you know, you knew that you had this really great idea and you can't remember what it is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. All the time, all the time. So I would just, uh, if you guys can practice just simple baby steps, I think it, it, it's a hard thing, right? So maybe you do it for an hour, but maybe it's just like, Hey, start off with 10 minutes or 15 minutes of just, can, can you start to do that? Right? Absolutely. And, and I think that's true of anything in life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's, you know, deliberate thinking, uh, or even, uh, even when it comes to working on your highest priorities, you know, I find that for most people, you know, if they do their work in short bursts, rather than sitting down and saying, Hey, I'm going to work on this project for the next three hours and, you know, uh, 45 minutes they, into it, you know, they get burnt out and they're off doing something else. And so, well, just take it one step at a time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, set a timer on your, on your smartphone or something like that and work for 25 minutes and take a break for five minutes and then come back and work for another 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, that sort of thing. Anything in baby steps helps you build that action muscle in that particular area. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. And you reach a point after you've done it for a while that when you don't do it, your mind is, is, is coming to you and say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, that you, you, this didn't work in the past that it's not going to work now get back to the basics of what you've been doing that have been successful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And that just brings you to the point. You have a chapter called the basic needs. And I have a, a lot of people ask me for advice, uh, of what they should do if they should start a business. And, um, and a lot of times I just, I kind of start with where they're at in life. What season are they in? Uh, do they have families to take care of? Are they married? Um, because we all have different seasons. So when you talk about your purpose and focusing on, look at your basic needs, what does that, what does that mean? Well, I think it, it, it's really getting to where, I, I think a couple of things. First of all, where are you, like you said, where are you in life and are you positioned at this point, you know, to be able to, when you look at that gap analysis, I mean, if, if as an example, let's take a real simple example, if you're thinking about starting a business and that business needs, uh, needs, you know, a half a million dollars in capital to get you started. And yet when you look at your finances, you're broke, Yeah, you know, that's not, that's not going to work real well. Mm -hmm. You know, but on the other hand, you know, if, uh, you know, if you've been saving and investing, you know, and you've got a decent investment portfolio that's worth, you know, say three or four million bucks and you want to start a business that's going to cost a half a million dollars, you're in a position financially to be able to, to do that. But it's, it's looking at that. And I think, again, looking, you know, as we talked about before with, you know, beliefs and the need for congruence between your beliefs and your purpose, you also have to look and say, okay, you know, what, what needs may, may need to be moderated or depending on where I am in life. I mean, like as an example, if you're married and you've got young children, uh, you know, 
what are you willing to sacrifice in your relationship with your children for building your business? And is that worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to be working 60, 80, 100 hours a week for the first two or three years to get your business off the ground, what's the impact going to be on your family? And, you know, and, and how do you, how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other thing too, is that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, if it doesn't line up, then I can't achieve my purpose. And I say, no, that's not necessarily true because I think purpose expresses itself in different ways, depending on the phase of life that you're in. Uh, so, you know, so mm -hmm. you, there's going to be some shifts there mm -hmm. because you're going to have different priorities uh, in, in life when you're young and you have young children versus when you are at the opposite end of that and your children are grown and now you're focused on your grandchildren and maybe you're starting into your retirement years, your purpose is going to express itself in different ways because you have that different financial situation. You have a different time situation. Maybe your time constraints aren't what they, what they were in, in prior years. Yeah, no, definitely. That's great advice. Uh, just kind of looking at where you, and I think you said the word sacrifice. And, you know, when you're looking at your basic needs, whatever decisions and go back to that choices that you make, whatever decisions you're going to make, you're going to have to sacrifice something, right? Um, if you start a new business, a lot of times people come to me, they already have a full-time job, plus they have a young family and they want to start a new business. And my advice is that is like, yeah, really, you're going to sacrifice a lot. You know, if you have to work two jobs now, uh, plus your family, like what are you willing to sacrifice? So I think that's just the things you have to look at in the big picture. Um, I want to get to the chapter where it's funny because you have talking about purpose and finding your purpose and your unique purpose. And then you have a chapter that says your purpose is not enough. <laughs> so, like, so like that was like my stomach dropped and I'm like, oh man, like you, you know, you're, you're excited. You found your purpose, but then what does it mean? Your purpose is not enough. It's it just it's it's foundational, but it's not enough. Um, you know, there you have to you have to be willing to back away and look at your life holistically. Uh, you know, and in its in its entirety, and and to you know to realize that you know that achieving your purpose, like you said, it takes it takes a lot of different things all coming together in order to be able to do that. And so it's really a call to take stock of yourself. You know, and like you were talking about, I think it's really, really important to emphasize it, that everything you do in life requires sacrifice. You know, what is that sacrifice? What are those things that you that you're going to have to be set aside? Because you can only put so much on your plate. You've got 24 hours in every day. Uh, so we really need to be intentional about making sure that we know exactly what we're doing, why we're doing, what cost, you know, what price we're going to pay for it. And in the final analysis, is the price that we're paying worth the reward that comes from it? Mm, yeah. And I, I totally agree. I see a lot of entrepreneurs, they just keep stacking stuff, stacking stuff onto their plate, and eventually they get burned out and they just kind of shut down. I know for me, I've been in that state too. Uh, and I've had to learn, it's like, okay, like, what do I have to say no to? I can't just keep stacking on. If I stack something else on, I got to, I'm going to be sacrificed. I got to, you know, say no to some other things. Right. Well, and the other, the other thing that's really important there is, and this is why uh, I've sort of taken the whole process through from purpose to then how do we logistically go about realizing purpose? Um, I gave a talk a number of years ago to a group of business people, and the talk was supposed to be on time management, which is really a misnomer. There is no such thing as managing time. All we can do is control the events of our lives. But as part of my talk, I, uh, I mentioned that I was a coach, and there was one guy who was sitting in the audience, and he sort of blurted out, you know, ah, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And then he was embarrassed because he'd said it. But I said, no, 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 this is, this is wonderful. And he said, how can you say, I, I just criticized you. How can you say this is wonderful? And I said, because it's an opportunity for everybody in this room to learn something. Mm. I said, are you willing to dialogue with me for a couple of minutes? And he said, well, yeah, sure. And I said, obviously you've had a bad experience with a coach. And he said, yes, I have. And I said, all right, tell me what happened. And he said, well, I you know, hired this guy and I spent you know, several thousand dollars with him. And you know what I wound up with? And I said, what's that? And he said, at the end of the whole thing, I wound up with another to-do list from hell. Mm. You know, and he said, what do you have to say about that? And I said, shame on your coach. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, when you work with me, you know, the list that you wind up with at the end of our time together is a lot shorter than what you're working on now. 
but the action items on that list are a whole lot more important. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of being able to, you know, to fulfill your purpose is to understand what are the, are the things that you need to stay focused on. And they're generally not very many of them, but you need to stay focused on them and then keep yourself focused on that on a daily basis. So you wind up with a lot less to do, but the stuff that you're doing is a lot more important and ultimately is a lot more impactful. Mm. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, as we wrap up the show here, uh, there's just a couple things I want to kind of hit home on. So you have a chapter on execution, which I think is, is key because we can come up with all these ideas, but you know, it's like ideas are great, but if you don't execute them, you don't end up with much. So how important is like executing? And then do you help people not only find their purpose, but then how do they execute it? Well, I think the execution part of it, and you're right, it is a vital part because up to the point of execution, all we're really doing is planning. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you don't take action on your plans, I, mean, I don't know how many companies I've worked with over the years that they would take the time, you know, they would take two or three months out of the year toward the end of the year, putting together a strategic plan. And the strategic plan winds up in a three ring binder on the shelf and, you know, and we don't do anything with it. It's not, it doesn't become foundational. It doesn't really drive any of the actions we're taking. And then we're disappointed at the end of the year when we pull it off the shelf and we've only accomplished 20% of what we said we wanted to do. Uh, so purpose is important. It's, a, it's important to nail it down. But the key to good execution is to, I think the tendency for people is to look at goals that may be a year or a year and a half or two years out there. And, and, and one of two things happens, either they get overwhelmed uh, with the enormity of the goal and therefore they never take action or they never answer the critical question. And that is, what is it that I have to do today, right now, in order to be able to see that goal that's a year out there achieved? And when we start doing that, when we take that goal and we start boiling it down, and can continually ask ourselves the question, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Until I get down to a point where I know what I need to do today. Number one, in the process of doing that, we've created the pathway of what we need to do. But number two is most of the time, the tasks that we have to do today are relatively simple. Mm -hmm. You know, today, you know, I may, the only thing I may have to do is send an email or make a phone call uh, or do a podcast interview. You know, something simple, something very basic. And as we do that day after day after day after day, we begin to build momentum toward the attainment of that goal. Mm -hmm. And three months down the road, when we turn around and we look back, it's like, oh my goodness, look how far I've come in that process. And it's all been because of taking those baby steps day after day after day after day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, awesome. And you also talk about celebration. And I remember I had a coach, a business coach for a few years, and I love to ask the question, what would you have done differently? Is he built up a business 20 years and then sold it for a lot of money. And he was a coach now. And, and his answer uh, surprised me. He said, I wish I would have enjoyed the ride more. Uh, he said, I didn't enjoy the ride. It was always the next goal, the next big thing, always trying to striving, digging, never took time to celebrate. So you talk about this in your book. How important is it to celebrate your achievements, your wins? I, I think it's extremely important because it's what gives us momentum. Um, there's a, uh, a former teacher of the year. I think he was teacher of the year, like back in maybe 1977, 1978. His name is Guy Rice Dowd. And he wrote a book called Joy in the Journey. Mm. Uh, we, have to, we have to learn, you know, that, uh, that success is not about reaching the destination. Success is about the process of reaching the destination. Because ultimately, as I said way back at the beginning of our conversation, it's about who we become in life. Are we constantly becoming better people? Uh, because that's really what it takes to, you know, to have that ability to be able to serve others and to be able to add value to their lives is to have a heart for them and helping them get where they want to be. Um, one of my favorite guys who's now passed on is Zig Ziglar. And, and Zig had a statement where he said, you can have anything in life that you want when you've helped enough other people get what it is that they want. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all, so for me, it's all about who, who are you becoming? And you can celebrate that day by day by day as you see yourself growing uh, and, and as you see yourself achieving more. And again, that just build, it builds the self-confidence, it builds the momentum, and it gives us the ability to blow through those, those days that are challenging. Mm, love it. Sounds good. Guys, we are with Gary Smith. We're about out of time. Gary, one last piece of advice, and where can uh, someone find your book, Purpose Driven Achievement? Uh, on Amazon is a great place to go. Okay, awesome. Any last piece of advice before we end the show here? Uh, you know, just uh, stay focused uh, and, and be intentional. Uh, you know, we have to learn to take charge of our lives. So much of the time, because we live in such a fast paced world that we, we just blow through things and, and we really uh, lose the ability to be intentional about our lives. And I think that that whole concept of employing that law of intentionality uh, to say, I'm going to take charge, I'm going to be responsible for me. Uh, and I'm going to be deliberate in how I approach life. If we'll just begin to take those small baby steps, a lot of the rest of our lives will begin to fall into place. Mm, Awesome. Sounds good, guys. We're with Gary Smith. Check out his book, Purpose Driven Achievement, and you can find that on Amazon. You can also uh, go to Gary's website. I think it's GaryLSmith.com. Correct. Is that right? So check that out, guys. Gary, I always like to end every show with a little fun, and I got four questions for you. This is called Gifts from Gary. And this is just about, you know, what types of gifts would would you give or what what type of gifts have you received? So these qu- uh, answers are like less than 60 seconds long. So number one, if you could gift a book to a business leader other than your own books, what book would you gift? Uh, I would gift a book called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Mm. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent book about, and really what it focuses in on is a lot about what we've been talking about today, and that is you know, being willing to add value uh, to other people's lives, that that's where true success comes from. Sounds good. If you were to gift a podcast, not sure if you're a podcast listener, but if you were to gift a podcast, what podcast would you give someone to listen to? You know, I, I'm not a big podcast guy. Um, you know, uh, one of the things I do do is I do listen to some sermons online. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of my favorite guys is a fellow named Andy Stanley, Andy mm-hmm. Stanley, uh, because he is, he is so good at breaking things down and he deals with the real issues of life you know, and breaks them down from a scriptural perspective. So, you know, anything by Andy Stanley, I think you're going to find is really, really good. Sounds good. I do listen to his podcast. He has a podcast out there as well. Um, a gift of advice that you were given in your life. What, what do you remember a get like a, some sort of advice from mentor coach, someone, um, give more. I think two things. One is, you know, give more in value than you receive in compensation. Mm. Always, always leave the people that you're working with feeling that they got so much more than what they paid for. I think that's, that's number one. And the second one is something that I learned uh, just within the past couple of weeks that I think is, is so powerful. And it's from Simon Sinek in one of his, uh, one of his talks. And he said that so much of the time as leaders in business, we see ourselves as being in charge. And he said, leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is about taking care of those in our charge. Mm. Uh, and I think that's very, very powerful. That's good. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to write that down. All right. Last one. What has been your greatest gift from God? Aside from, um, aside from my salvation, I think the, the gift of my wife and my children, uh, they have been such a tremendous blessing to me uh, over the years. Uh, and that's not to say that everything has gone smoothly. You know, we all face challenges in, in various phases of our lives, but, um, you know, but just being able to be to be blessed with, you know, with good quality people, uh, you know, people who are loving and caring and, and really minister to each other's needs, uh, I think is the, is the greatest gift I've received. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for being on the Breast Snodgrass podcast today, Gary. Appreciate you. Guys, check out Gary's book, um, The Purpose Driven Achievement. You can find that on Amazon or his website, GaryLSmith.com. And it's a wrap with Gary Smith. Thank you so much, Gary. God bless you. 
Oh, God bless you, Brett. It's been a real pleasure being with you today. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below, and I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.